This is the Lotus Amira. Yes, it is. But we don't want tour, we want sport. And this is where we pray for no oncoming traffic. And then we get serious. This is Lotus' first new car since the Evora, whose first model year was 2009. This is built on the Evora chassis, including the same Toyota sourced, essentially Camry engine, V6 with a supercharger and the same gearbox. Four hundred horsepower, three hundred and ten pound feet of torque. And what in what I think may be alone in the industry, they have given this hydraulic steering because they know that their owners and buyers like steering feel. Oh, it's so good. It's so very good. When was the last time a Toyota Camry sounded like that? I'll tell you, the Evora was the last time. Notice at extreme high speeds, this uh, window starts to have a bit of a, a leak, an air leak. Uh, that could be just this car. These are very early production demonstrators for the U.S. They actually aren't even delivering cars to the U.S. yet. They've had so much demand, they are about a year behind based on demand and also just the availability of parts because, of course, the whole world is struggling with that. Six-speed manual, hydraulic steering, actual limited slip differential. This gearbox is good, but not amazing. It's dealing against a transversely mounted engine. It doesn't have like best in the industry precision, but it is very good. It reminds me a lot of the one in my Elise because it is the exact same stick. I'm sure over time refinements will be made to make this gearbox better. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's not the top two or three in the industry. This one has the sport setup tuning for the suspension. Now this is not an adjustable suspension system. Again, remember this is pretty old school in thinking. Everything is set up right the first time and left alone. So this has the sport package on it, which is a bit stiffer suspension. There's still a decent and acceptable amount of body roll here. It's not a super flat car, but it just, it feels stiff on the road. And I think if you were gonna daily this, you'd probably prefer the touring suspension.
Supercharger wine. Pedal box is really pretty tiny. I have to wear my narrow shoes, but it feels very similar to what's going on in the Elise. If you have wide feet or you wear pretty big wide shoes, you're going to be unhappy driving this car because the pedal box will be too small for you. Beyond that, this has a full-size dead pedal. That's significant because the Evora originally had none and then it had a little sliver. This has a full-size dead pedal for your left foot, which is actually really nice. And the sills have gotten a lot narrower, so getting in and out of this is actually pretty easy and kind of normal. This screen is nice, very clean, pretty minimalist in its design, works actually pretty well. It's not the fastest ever, which is a bit disappointing considering it is 2023. It's not a really fast screen, but the only real annoyance that I have is this, uh, this drive mode here where you have to toggle it once to get the screen and then pick what you want. Want to drop into tour, that makes it a little quieter. But again, it doesn't change the suspension setting because there isn't a way to do that. I actually prefer that. Let's get it right the first time, but your throttle response changes, the loudness of the exhaust changes. Again, you got to toggle to get it to come up, then you got to pick your moment. That's too many steps for a quick drive mode change. It's interesting to drive this finally and to realize how much it does have reminiscent feel of my Elise. I'm quite surprised by that. Also, while this is a direct competitor to the Cayman in price and frankly the C8 as well, though this is a little more expensive than a C8, I think this actually has a lot more Elise feeling in it than I was ever expecting and I don't think it's for everybody. I don't think it's just like, well, you get a Cayman or you can get an Amira. I think you have to really want an Amira. I don't think it's a car for everybody that everybody would enjoy. Realizing that it has, hang on. Realizing that it has some of that Elise feel has actually made me like it even more, but I was, I was caught off guard by that originally. Hidden driveways. I love being able to look in the mirror and see the throttle response at the top of the engine. There is no question this could do with better seats. The seats are good, they're not bad seats. It's just, if you're gonna drive this car hard, you're gonna wish for more aggressive bolstering. The, the base is okay. The upper part of the, the back of the seat, the bolsters are just, they're not aggressive enough. They're comfortable, but they're not gonna hang on to you if you're really hammering down a back road. 
I also am not a big fan of an Alcantara steering wheel. I know a lot of people like them. I would much prefer leather. This is me being picky about a car that, in most cases, I'm just loving driving, and I cannot believe it exists. This is, this is an old school car, and I mean that as a compliment. There's a lot of things about old cars that aren't worthwhile and aren't as fun as you might think they are, but this is like a greatest hits of stuff we know works. Because of the supercharger, this has a good amount of mid-range power. I mean, certainly you can shift whenever you want and it's enjoyable. You also can do what I'm doing for some of this and that is just leave it in the gear and just work the throttle. Really bumpy through here. Worth it. So worth it. Ah, Lotus Amira. I think I love thee. Hey, look, I happen to pull a G in each direction of cornering. That's nice. Tells me both places. Good stuff. Wasn't even trying. That's what's crazy. There wasn't even major effort made. I should pull a G, and I just did. Okay. Lotus Amira. You've got HVAC controls down here that work great. You've got your fan speed, etc., right here, but you've also got you can jump to it here and it actually shows you with pictures. Notice that the little guy's got a helmet on. That makes me laugh. You've got all of your controls here as well. Back here to the center, all the way out to the main screen. I've got Apple CarPlay and everything that works just fine. Again, you've got a performance screen. That's what I had up. It actually shows things like downforce. And look, I pulled a G. That's exciting. Over here on the wheel, you've got your general uh, selections here all the way down through lap timers, tires, what's your audio, navigation, etc. I wish this menu scrolled. You have to scroll up and down instead of it rotating and flipping back through. But, I mean, again, this is a me being picky moment. Okay. Well, sad, but goodbye. <laughs>